55 million of these are made a year here at Diamond Bakery. Soda crackers. The soda cracker is our number one seller. That is what we're all known for here. That humble snack you grew up with. When it comes to soda crackers in Hawaii, the first thing that pops up is Diamond Bakery. But exactly how are these legendary soda crackers made over a hundred plus years later? These are iconic soda crackers being made right now. On today's episode of Amanda and Felix Eats, we are taking you behind the scenes to see exactly that. You guys don't want to miss our tour of this iconic bakery. What's going on Foodie Ohana? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're taking you guys behind the scenes exclusive access to Diamond Bakery. And yes, if you're thinking about those soda crackers and those royal cream crackers, you're right. We are showing you guys how this iconic cracker is made. Named after the famous landmark Diamond Head, Diamond Bakery was founded in 1921 by three Japanese immigrants. With the view of Diamond Head, they perfected the baking process and the soda cracker was born. Over a century later, this local factory, now located in Kalihi, produces over 55 million individual soda crackers a year. Being sold all over Hawaii and the world, the soda cracker remains a timeless classic still being enjoyed today. Welcome, this is Diamond Bakery. My name is Alan Martin, and I am the production manager at Diamond Bakery. We're mainly known for our soda crackers, but we also have our graham crackers, our saloon pilots. We make an extensive line of shortbread cookies. Everything's made here with love. Pretty much everything is here in-house, and you get to see the magic soon during our tour. Soda crackers, cookies, and assorted Japanese candies, because the founders were, of course, three Japanese immigrants in the 1920s. Everything's so old school, like, it's all done by hand. Everything was so analog, right? They have these big rollers that they have to crank by hand. What they've done back then has definitely paved the road for us today. If you guys remember this logo, drop a like down below. All right, let's see the magic. Oh, it smells good in here. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it smell good? So that is our soda crackers that we're making right now. And he's mixing the soda crackers for production. So that's what he's doing now. He's making that sponge for tomorrow's Bake Off. This is called a spindle mixer. It can mix up to a thousand pounds of dough at any given time. Specifically designed to mix in these tubs that are able to roll in and out of the machine. Up here, you see our scale that has a capacity of 800 pounds. And then from the tub, we mix in all the other ingredients and it goes into the spindle mixer has an automatic water function where we, we tell it how much water to put in and it automatically meters that out into the tub while it's mixing. So it's a semi-automatic function here when it comes to making our soda crackers on the mixing side. Just like sourdough, our soda crackers has a very long fermentation process. The dough is mixed 18 hours before and it's stored in these fermentation rooms to develop the flavor profile that is unique to the soda crackers. So after the 18 hours of fermentation, it gets remixed into this machine with more flour and water and then it has to rest for four hours to relax the gluten. When the gluten's relaxed, it goes into the lapper area here. So here is where the unique flavor and texture and bite comes from. It's similar to the croissant where there, we create the layers of gluten to give it that nice flaky texture. The conveyor belt starts over here where we have these special rollers that take the scrap off. Down the conveyor belt it goes and back up and around to the beginning of the lapping process. So in our soda cracker production, all the scraps get recycled back into the dough. That way we're reducing waste in the production process. This machine has been around longer than I've been alive. 1980, 44-year-old machine, and it's still pumping. <laughs> in our stabber here, you can see our shape. So this is the start of the automated baking process. Our oven here is 120 feet long. The temperature ranges from 450 degrees to 500 degrees from beginning to end. For us, we chose 120 feet for baking in Hawaii. Environment, temperature, humidity all plays a role in the baking process. The company, Thomas Green, designed the oven 
custom built for how we want to have our production based off of the conditions that we have here. Our cookie line is 60 feet long. At the end of the oven to 120 feet, it takes seven minutes to bake our soda crackers. We bake everything high and fast and it comes out just right. In parts for our efficiency and creating the volume that we need to supply the whole state. There's three zones. Zone one is specifically for very high heat and the rise. So that's where you get that nice poof or the blisters that you see on the soda crackers. So this is zone one here. It gets really hot. Zone two is a little longer and that's mainly for moisture removal to get that nice crunch that you have in the soda crackers. But this is where we don't want to see too much color just yet. Because if we start seeing color in zone two, then we know the oven's way too hot on the front end. And then zone three, mainly for color. So that nice golden toasty color. So here you can definitely see that we have color. So these are our process controls or checkpoints that I have my operators constantly monitor every 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that we have our quality control in place and our products coming out pristine and perfect for sales. And here it is. Our soda crackers are coming out of the oven. Just the right color, just the right height. This is our OG right here. This is our original soda crackers. It's like, a, it's like my soda cracker baby. <laughs> this is where I keep the, the process controls in place. I have my operators, sampling we call it, that comes out of the oven every 15, 20, 30 minutes or so. And so that way there's constant monitoring, making sure there's no, very little room for error here. Fresh off the line. Fresh off the line. So here, you break them off into twos, and you just take them like that. You can do it. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna miss. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, there okay. you go. You got one. <laughs> <laughs> They're still warm. You gotta try them. Fresh Diamond Bakery soda cracker, the iconic soda cracker, right off the line, guys. It's so nice and warm, still. Wow, I know everyone is used to just opening the package and dipping it in your soup or just using it as like a vessel, but you gotta heat these up before you eat it. It's a game changer. Just pre-toast these bad boys before you enjoy it. Wow. Good. Taste of nostalgia. After the oven, it breaks off into single rows here. It goes through our cooling belt process where it goes up the incline and it goes to the long conveyor belt and it goes back around this way and it comes down to what we call the shingler. Our cracker is getting ready for breaking them into the individual two-piece crackers that you're so used to seeing. These rollers break the crackers after the crackers are broken, getting ready for the girls to pack. Playing with all the different speeds because we have so many conveyor belts. There's no on these dials. Yeah. It's always my feel. Yeah, so this is where I grab samples as well. This is after the complete cooling process. I, I do it for feel. I kind of feel how snappable it is. We have all our workers doing a lot of hard work hand packing everything from the sheer volume of products that we make here. In a given year, we make 700,000 pounds of dough just for soda crackers alone, which equates to about 55 million individual crackers. 55 million of these are made a year here at Diamond Bakery. The sheer volume of product that we can make out of this tiny little factory is amazing. All these soda crackers get put through these conveyor belts, through the guardrails, and into the slow wrapper here. Packs the soda crackers in the four stacks. And right now it's running at 180 packages per minute. So just imagine the speed that we have here. We're working pretty fast. We can show that we can fulfill all the orders that we have for all the stores that you guys buy the soda crackers from. This is the machine here. It packs and fills our new cartons, our new packaging. This is our overwrap here. It's got iconic, nostalgic soda cracker boxes that you see in all the stores. This is it. This is the final piece of that puzzle. So this is our grab and go or restaurant packs as we call them where our products are placed in tiny individual packs we call them the zippy so i can show you our bagging line where we bag all our cookies in hello but here you get the bird's eye view of what we call our bagging machine or the swifty so what happens is the cookies get dumped into a hopper at the bottom each of those channels is a scale measuring out to the exact weight that's we need to go into the bags. And it's so precise that it drops just the right amount of cookies into each bag every time. Yeah, so today we're bagging our Toffee Mac Nut cookies. You guys gotta have it fresh off the line. Toffee Mac Nut, oh gosh, so excited. Yes. 
Oh wow, smells slightly warm too, like a little warm. Wow, ah. I'm gonna start reheating all my cookies and crackers from now on. Oh, it makes a, such a great difference. So here we're going into our fulfillment room. This is the room where the magic happens here. So when you put your online orders in through our website, our uh, e-commerce team, our fulfillment team works out of here to pack everything, to weigh everything, to put them in these nice boxes, to ship it over to wherever you are, straight from the source. These are our fundraising lines. So our fundraiser flavors are ex exclusive just for fundraising only. We don't sell them retail. So if anyone wants to start a fundraiser, we also do that too. Wow, so we, we have, grow with these flavors. Yeah, cookies and cream. We have s'mores. We have cotton candy. That was it. That was our uh, soda cracker production from dough to finished packaged good. And I hope you enjoyed the whole process with us. Well, here we are in our factory retail outlet store. It's located here at our factory, uh, 756 Mo'owa Street. And here we get the highlight all the items that we make here in the production area. Some items are not in stores, so that way if you come here, you get to see everything that we make. We're in all our local grocery stores, Times, Don Quixote, Safeway, Foodland, Long, Sam's Club, Costco, and Walmart as well, statewide. We do have an uh, e-commerce retail outlet there as well, so if you go to our website, you can shop on our website, diamondbakery.com, and we ship everything out of here. Out, out of the factory as well. Thank you so much for having us. We had an awesome time and we got to take our foodie Ohana along with us. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is our retail spot here. All of our products on display for visitors to come see what we have. Our retail is from 10 to 2. So yeah, if you here. guys want to come shopping, try some new stuff. As always, we leave everything in the description down below. But now it's time for the fun part and we get to shop around. Oh, it's even a shopping basket. Oh, so cute. Oh, right. thank you. It is. And it's collab with Eden in Love. Oh, peach. I've never seen that before. This guava one sounds really good. And taro. They have a brownie. Do you see this? For foodie ohana out there that want to get your friends some gifts, omiyage, or care packages, these are definitely one of the greatest things to give. A little taste of home right here. Mac nut shortbread, or if you guys want to go with the OG, you can get the original royal cream crackers. These were in my lunchbox when I was a kid. We did have a collaboration with Information. They're a local design company here in Hawaii. Uh, they have really cool hats. And of course, it says baked in Hawaii. Oh, I love that. And the really cool, colorful under the lid bill thing. And I love the Shaka cookie jar here. Right? Oh, I love it. So, and of course, we have stuff for kids as well. My, my son has everything, all this stuff. These are the cutest things ever. Oil cream coasters. Oh, that's cute. Right? <laughs> yeah, so another collab that we did, and this was totally unscripted. They just kind of came to us and said, hey, this is what we're doing with your product. I have some in the fridge, so I'd have to go get it for you real quick. They used our royal cream crackers. They soaked it in cream, condensed milk, and they layered it into a cake with chocolate. Wow, that's so cool. There's a bunch of like layers on here too with all of the crackers. Guaiqueri empanadas made a homemade, what would you call it? Like a bread pudding without bread, but instead it's, they use the cream crackers. It's like a chocolate ganache cake with oh. a royal cream crackers. Chocolate ganache cake with the royal cream crackers. Mmm, it tastes like a cake. Wow, it's not too sweet too. That's really good. This is my kind of dessert. Mmm. It's even on the inside, like layered. Oh, wow. Holy cow. It's very like subtly sweet, but you get like the chocolate and the, the cracker. Did we get some royal creams? We can replicate this at home or attempt to. The, the thing I love is the ingredients are is so versatile. What, are you guys hiring for the R&D department or taste test department? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sorry guys, that's gonna be my new job. You know? <laughs> Official taste tester. Yeah, that's what I wanna be. All right, Foodie Ohana, that's gonna do it for today's episode. We showed you guys from start to finish how these delicious crackers were made. And we wanna give a big shout out to Diamond Bakery and Sasha and Alan for taking us along 
and setting this whole factory tour up. We are so, so grateful. Because of you guys, Foodie Ohana, we would never be able to do these kind of really cool things. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. If you like this kind of series where we show you guys the behind the scenes of these iconic local businesses, definitely leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear your feedback. And while you're down there, give this video a big thumbs up. It helps us out a lot. And if you have not already, hit that subscribe button down below and we will see you guys on the next episode. Right, until the next foodie adventure, explore your inner foodie. Peace out. Bye guys. It's like the uh, automated salt bin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but here I kind of reach it. Oh, ow. <laughs> this is the first thing to eat this morning, too. <laughs> Chocolate in the morning. Baked goods are made. Okay, there. One more time.